Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, I'll turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about spiritual weapons. Uh, the Lord has given each of you and us uh, <clears throat> mighty weapons of warfare. And so we're going to talk about these. You know, a lot of people, um, the only thing they think about on uh, spiritual warfare and weapons is when they're reacting to something the devil has done, some damage that the devil has done to them or uh, people around them. And, and we really need to realize there are some offensive weapons and that we should be on the offensive and not always mm. reacting uh, to what the, our enemy has done. We have an enemy, uh, but we'll see that you have the victory. He, uh, Jesus Christ has made you an overcomer. And so we're going to uh, talk about that. So we're going to, first of all, just have an introduction uh, to spiritual weapons and spiritual things. And I want to start with uh, Ephesians chapter 6. And I know this is very familiar with all of you. And so we're not going to read it. We're just going to list the, the uh, elements of the armor. And we will notice that there are basically five that are uh, defensive uh, pieces of armor. And there are two uh, that can be used uh, on the offense so that we can be proactive and uh, uh, move forward and that we're not just simply uh, waiting on the enemy to do something. Um, okay, so I want Sherry to read these, but basically it starts with the belt of truth. Mm -hmm. you know, what, Ephesians 6. These are the seven uh, spiritual elements or parts of the armor. Number one is the belt of truth. Number two is the breastplate of righteousness. Number three is the are the shoes of the gospel of peace. Number four is the shield of faith. Number five is the element of the helmet of salvation. Number six is the sword of the spirit. Number seven is prayer. Okay, so um, most of these are our defense against uh, the attacks of the enemy, against uh, the fiery darts of the enemy. Now notice that our whole uh, person and body is covered with the armor of God, except for the back. And uh, one of the things mm -hmm. you need to recognize, you don't need to turn your back on the devil, but also it means that you need to be with other believers uh, so that we can support one another uh, because uh, we don't, we have nothing on our back, nor was it designed. We were not designed to have, uh, armor on our back. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, medieval armor, if you think about that, people, uh, warriors with medieval armor, they had it all over them. But we're in a spiritual warfare and we do have enemies. And so uh, what I want you to see is we do have the sword of the spirit. And of course, that's by the spirit of God. And it's the uh, word of God uh, being uh, activated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, and so we're not going to talk about that immediately. I want to focus on prayer. And so we, uh, five of those seven pieces uh, were definitely for defense. And then two, the sword and prayer, sword of the spirit and prayer. Those uh, can be offensive uh, weapons. Uh, they can be defensive weapons as well. Uh, but prayer with prayer uh, it, it says all prayer, and uh, uh, throughout uh, Christian history, that has been called the weapon of all prayer. So there's a lot of different kinds of prayer, and uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about that. We're not going to go into a lot of detail now about it, but I want to say that prayer uh, is so important because it works with all of your weapons. Prayer works with all of the weapons. It's uh, communicating with God. We're going to see that, that prayer is very important in whatever you do. But it's not the only thing. There's some things that work with uh, prayer, and that is uh, watching and fasting. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it says watch and pray. Watch you, and pray. Uh, that you do not enter into temptation. So we need to watch and pray. What did, What is the Lord talking about when he says watch and pray? So we'll do both of those. And that is, to, if you think about the watchman uh, in the time of Jesus and on the walls of the of the uh, cities, uh, they would you would have some watchmen during the different uh, hours of the night, the different watches of the night. I think mm -hmm. there are four different watches uh, up until midnight and then till, up till three o'clock and then up till six o'clock. And uh, so there's different watches. There are about three hour uh, lengths. That was uh, historically what they were. Okay, so uh, what he, well, the basic idea of these two concepts is about self-denial watching and praying mm -hmm. and you, you know jesus said if you're my disciple you, you need to take up your cross mm -hmm. and follow, follow me. me and so you need to deny yourself and so uh prayer see it, we're talking mainly about prayer but putting two supplements with it watching and fasting and that's really where the self-denial comes in i want you to read matthew 16 here about self-denial matthew 16 24 then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Okay. And now we're going to look at watching. What does it mean? There's uh, to take some time during the night and you and pray. Mm. And uh, you might say, well, I, I'm busy in the daytime. Well, self-denial. Jesus said, <laughs> If you're my disciple, you're going. There's going to be some self denial, and here is a thing that that we don't get the victories without some self denial, and, mm -hmm. and we have to be led by the Spirit. So major victories in your life will mm -hmm. require not only prayer, mm -hmm. but watching that you uh, losing some sleep at night and praying. Might be praying for your loved ones. Might be praying. Uh, for your community, whatever the Lord uh, tells you to do. And don't do it in the natural. Don't do it uh, in the carnal realm, but you need to be led by the Spirit. When is it mm -hmm. that you need to be watching in the night? And because we all have major issues that we're dealing with, and I'm giving you some ideas how we can overcome and have breakthrough. And so prayer is very important, but prayer doesn't stand alone. So I've got these two verses in Isaiah and Luke. I want you to read about watching. Isaiah 62, 6. I have set watchmen on the walls. O Jerusalem, or O church, they shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent. And then in Luke 18, 7, and you might think, well, that was an Old Testament uh, uh, requirement. But, but look here. Look what the New Testament says. These, mm. are, these are the words of Jesus in Luke. Luke 18, 7. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Okay. If you want to activate this promise that God will avenge you, you need to be crying out day and night. And you might say, well, I'm so busy in the day. We'll take some time in the night. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying here. And it's going to have it's going to have a payoff for it. If you won't break through, it's going to require some self-denial. Now, there's another type, and that is fasting. And what is fasting? It's giving up some food. The other was giving up some sleep. Now we're talking about giving up some food, a uh, fast with a uh, purpose. Now, Fasting does not move God. What it does is move you. your flesh out of the way so that you can communicate with the Lord and receive what the Lord is speaking to you. So you don't think that, oh, I fasted and now God God's has, to, move. God has to do something. I've obligated God. No, you'll never obligate God. Oh, no, no, no. There's a lot of people that have that misconception that they have done everything right and they have obligated God and God has to do it. And, mm -hmm. and they're well, entitled. Yeah, and they're entitled to him doing something for them. But I tell you, 
that's a that's mistake. That mm. is a mistake. That's deception. And people wind up hating God, mad at God, going away from God because they thought they were entitled to something mm. that they never were entitled to. Mm -hmm. Because you never, you never get to the point where you can obligate God to do something in your part. You've got to work. This is all about cooperating with the Lord through his spirit. Okay, so there are some things we need to uh, we need to be watching and fasting because I want you to read this out of Matthew 17. His disciples could not cast out a, a, a demon one time. And so they went and out to him, to Jesus and said, hey, what's this going to take? And he said, it's going to take some fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, read this. Here. Matthew 17, 21. This kind of a spirit comes out only if you use prayer and fasting. Okay. Now, I'd, I'd like to just make a comment here. We are talking about offensive spiritual weapons. And this, this means that, that you are ahead of the enemy. That you're not just reacting to his attack on, on your body or your mind or your finances or your family these we're talking about weapons that we can use as believers as offensive uh weapons against the enemy's attack Amen. and prayer and fasting and keeping yourself built up in the spirit is certainly offensive and it gets you ready to meet any type of challenge uh, that's out there and but uh, there's so many people that they're just there and they um do not pray they do not watch and pray they do not uh prepare themselves and therefore they're caught unawares and and that brings fear that brings uh, defeat that brings discouragement uh, that de brings depression and so but there are things that we can do and this message tonight is very critical because people are going through challenging times uh, with their families with their bodies with their minds and so what the Lord is giving us tonight is is critical information it's knowledge. It's critical knowledge. And it will help us if we will take heed to it. Okay. So we're talking about how to have a major breakthrough in your life. Amen. And Amen. in the lives of the people around you. Now, here's something very fundamental. We're going to look at what Jesus did on the cross. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's very fundamental that you understand what he did. And this is in Colossians 2, verses 13 through 15. And there, mm -hmm. we're going to go slow, and I'm going to show you three major things that Jesus did on the cross. And you need to know all three of these. So read verse 13, then I want to talk about it. Okay. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. When you were dead in your sins and in your uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins. Okay. The important point here is all of your sins have been forgiven. So if you kicked your dog this morning and you, you think that's a sin, well, you've been forgiven. It was all mm -hmm. forgiven. Whatever you've done all over your life, throughout your uh, entire lifetime, it's all been forgiven. Amen. Now, if there's any hint of guilt in you the devil is going to take you to the cleaners he's going to defeat you if there if you do not get this down in your heart you do not have guilt because jesus has forgiven you he through the god has forgiven you through the work of jesus on the cross all of your sins are forgiven. Not 99% of mm -hmm. 
but 100%. And you have to, you have to settle that in your heart. You have no guilt. Hallelujah. If you think, oh, but I did something that was just too big, too bad. God can't forgive me. Oh, that's wrong. Jesus, what he did on the cross, God has forgiven all of us, all of our sins. Sin is not an issue. And if the devil can hold one, one instance of sin against you, he will defeat you. You have to be settled in your heart. All your sins are forgiven. That's verse 13. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All your sins are forgiven. Amen. And it's either a, a, a contest of righteousness versus guilt. And it, where are you going to stand? If you have any guilt, the enemy overtakes you. Mm -hmm. So you have to stand totally in righteousness because all of your sins have been forgiven. Now let's go to verse 14. This is Colossians 2, verse 14. Now this is talking about a different issue than forgiveness of sins, okay? He, having canceled the charges of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to his cross. Okay, this is not your sins, because that was taken care of in verse 13. He's talking about the law. Now the standard for your uh, righteousness is no longer the law, but it is grace. Ooh, you have hallelujah. to understand that. This, these are the ordinances that were against you. These were the requirements of the law that you could not fulfill, but Jesus fulfilled the whole law for you. He went to the cross as you and you were crucified on the cross with him but now you have new life new life so this is not number two here we're talking about verse 14 we're not talking about your sins anymore it's talking about the righteous requirements of the law no longer is that in play it has been taken care of it's completely out of the picture now you cannot uh, fulfill, receive righteousness through your good works. This is the mm. work of the cross, the work of grace, and the, all of the ordinances that were against you. Sure, there were ordinances against us. We could not fulfill the law. There's only one person who fulfilled mm -hmm. the law, and that is Jesus Christ, but he fulfilled it for you. Hallelujah. So it is fulfilled. Don't be concerned about it. Don't go back into all of the requirements, all of the washings, all of the feasts, all of the, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do it because those requirements have been taken away by the work of Jesus on the cross. cross. That's the Amen. two Amen. things here. First, your sins are forgiven. The second, the righteous requirements of the law have been done away with, and now your righteousness comes through grace. Now, knowing those two things, then we get to the third point, and this is verse 15. I want you to read it. And having disarmed, listen to this, the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them. That's all the demonic forces triumphing or being victorious over them by the cross. Okay. Okay. What that says is the devil has no more weapons to be used against you. He can only use what you give him to use. If you carry guilt, he will use it. But he has no mm. weapons because he has dis been disarmed by what Jesus Christ did on the, cry on on the, the cross. cross. See, uh, the Holy Spirit told me a long time ago, ascribe no power, power to, to the, the devil. devil and that has been my stance since he said it to me i do not ascribe any power to the devil now why could i say that because right there colossians 2 15 says he's been disarmed he has nothing Hallelujah. he has nothing that can harm you but you've got to understand Woo! these three points. And I, I want to just uh, give a few scriptures here 
to back this up. And I want to talk about the law being done away with, Jerry. Where this is Ephesians and Romans, I think. I have mm-hmm. Ephesians 2.15. Okay. Having abolished in his flesh the intimacy that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Hallelujah. Okay, so he has abolished Abolish. Is that word abolish? Abolish. He has abolished all of those requirements of the law. Abolish. Mm, I mean, they don't mm, exist mm, anymore. Mm, mm. We're under some, a better covenant uh, based oh, on better promises. promises. Okay, now what about Romans? Let's see this. Romans 10 4. For Christ is the end of the law. Oh, he's the end. Okay. He's the end. It's over with. The law's over with. So it has no bearing For on righteousness you. to everyone who believes. Okay, righteousness comes through believing, mm-hmm. through grace. No uh, longer yeah. it's about requirements, okay? Now I, have, I think I have something on uh, the, uh, let's see, what's next? Ephesians 6, 12. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay. We did. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Okay, so what I want you to see here, who are our enemies? This is Ephesians 6 12. Who are our enemies? And we're going to just do some listing here. But remember, they have no weapons. Okay. Mm, hallelujah. Okay. But against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Okay. So where are they? They're in heavenly places. They're in the uh, second heaven, and there's fighting going on there. But what we need, we need a weapon that is above. We need a Mm -hmm. weapon that is above them. So we're going to talk now about the three basic weapons, and they're the word of God, the name of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus. Mm. Those are three main weapons. Now they all are operate in connection with prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay, but what what we saw in uh, Ephesians six there were uh, all of our enemies, and a lot of them are operating in the heavens. So we need something. We, we've got these three. Uh, we've got these three. Main weapons. Let me go over them again. And they all come through the mouth. The word of God, the, the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We activate them through our mouth. And God has a way that we can get above all of our enemies. And we see that. We see that in Psalm 8, verses 1 and 2. And this is talking about one of our enemy, well, about one of our weapons that takes us above all of our enemies. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Okay, so this passage, we're just looking at two verses here. It's about the name of the Lord, and that was talking about the, and now we mm, say mm. that's the name of Jesus. So I said we've got three main weapons. We release them with our mouth. And we're, right now we're talking about the name of Jesus, and the name of Jesus will take us above mm, every mm, enemy. Mm, okay, mm. go ahead, read. Hallelujah. Out of the mouth of babes and in infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Okay, now does this have a phrase in there, above the heavens? Oh, yeah. Who have set your glory above the heavens. Okay, so there's... Something here that's going to take us above the heavens. Now, the enemies were in the heavens, it said, but there's something that's going to take us above the heavens. Oh, that's above yeah, our enemies, yeah. and that's the name of the Lord. Mm. In our case, it's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to take us above there, and we've got to activate this and, and uh, release it with our mouth, okay? And who's, who's going to release it? It's the mouth of babes and infants mm. or sucklings. Mm-hmm. With their mouth. Now, who are these? They are innocents. They are people who are innocent. Okay? Mm, mm, But if mm, all of mm, your mm, sins mm, have been forgiven, that's you. You are innocent. If all of your sins, now, if you accept all of your sins have been forgiven, 
you are an innocent one. You are innocent. Hallelujah. And so and out of your mouth can mm -hmm. come something that is going to stop the Avenger and it's going to take you above where all your enemies are. Oh, Let's go over this verse, these two verses again. Because they're very oh, important. Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all of the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens and out of the mouth of babes or out of those who are innocent. Uh -huh. You have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the devil and the demonic forces and the avenger hallelujah hallelujah don't you want to do that well jesus tells i mean if the enemy wants to close your mouth oh. because these three weapons which are mighty through christ jesus are released out of your mouth but the enemy wants to shut your mouth so that you do not speak the word of god you do not speak in the name of jesus and you do not uh release the blood of jesus over you hallelujah. oh hallelujah he wants to shut you up <laughs> but what this does right here it shuts his mouth hallelujah he is the accuser he is the one that accuses 24 7 day and night. day and night hallelujah now this is not over with because now we go to the new testament and jesus liked that verse so much he made a divine comment about it, and that is Matthew 21. He goes back and makes a reference to those mouths mm -hmm. of the babes and the infants, okay? Okay, Matthew 21, 16. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he says to all of us that he is the one that has defeated the enemy. You do not have to face your enemy alone. He says, I have your back. He says, I will be. Uh, there for you. I will never forget you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. For I am the one that fights for you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The enemies are defeated. You Woo! have enemies, but they are defeated. They have been defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 21, 16. Okay, now this is Jesus, and he is elaborating on what we saw in Hebrew in psalm 8 mm -hmm. verses 1 and 2 he's elaborate he's expanding it okay and he said unto him do you hear what these are saying okay let me just give you the context of this uh jesus went into the temple and the children were just hallelujah hosanna to the king hallelujah hosanna mm -hmm. hosanna hosanna okay and they're just praising praising the lord they're praising the lord and and the uh people uh, the leaders there in the temple, they came to Jesus and they wanted to shut up. They wanted to mm -hmm. shut up those who were praising the Lord. And, and that's going to, you're going to face that too. The enemy wants to shut you up. Mm -mm. Oh, hallelujah. He may use somebody to do it. He may use a family member. Oh, shut up mm -mm. to tell you to shut up. That, these were religious leaders. Right. I wanted to shut up these people praising the Lord. But listen to what Jesus said. And Jesus said to them, Yes, I have you. Have you never read out of the bay, out of the mouth of babes and infants? He's referring back to Psalms the, 8, verses 1 and those 2. Those who are innocent, you have perfected praise. Oh, hallelujah. Now, over there, it was called you've uh, a perfected, uh, you've ordained strength. Now he's saying you're perfecting praise. So praise is involved here. You're going to have to praise the Lord. You're going to have to open your mouth and praise the lord hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah and that will silence the enemy Amen. see there's so many people listening to the enemy day and night that's right day and night uh, i think sherry's had uh, calls recently mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. about people who have been listening to the enemy day and night and mm -hmm. and they're wanting to justify themselves but you can't justify yourself. Just do what the Spirit says. Do what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now, we do have enemies, and they have uh, some things that they're doing. They're speaking out, okay? Mm -hmm. So your enemies are speaking out things, and you need to be speaking out things. Now, if you want to overcome your enemies, you need to be speaking out more than they're speaking to you because yeah. they're day and night mm. they are accusing you 
They're accusing your spouse. They're accusing your children. They, uh, day and night, they are accusing the people around you to you, keeping you in an uproar, keeping you in chaos, okay? But you've got to take the upper hand. You open your mouth and you praise the Lord and you will silence your enemies. The enemies. Okay, go ahead, Sherry, read. Well, What's next? It says that in Revelation 16, 13 of that, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Okay, so the devil is speaking things, and all of his servants are speaking things. It's like frogs. If you've been around frogs, they're out there croaking all night. They're in the darkness, mm -hmm. croaking all night. And so people are trying to sleep, and the, uh, and the devil and his uh, all of his imps and uh all of the people serving him, they're, they're continually, their own Wi-Fi, their own internet, their own uh, mm -hmm. social media, they're on the phone, they're, they're, because they are hearing the voices of the devil and, and of his servants and, and the, all, of their in, all of their enemies, they're hearing these voices and it's just, uh, uh, it's messed up their mind and so they're just speaking out what they're hearing. And it's like frogs croaking all night long, mm -hmm. all night. And if those get loose, get uh, hearing those things, I'm talking about evil spirits speaking and bringing accusations uh, against uh, the p people around you, against your leaders, against uh, everyone. There, there's all of this stuff. It's garbage coming from darkness like frogs just croak, croak, croak all night long and it wants to just wear you down so that you cannot think properly. And, and so what you have to do is start praising the Lord and silence all of those wicked, wicked voices that are coming against you, coming against the people that you love and care about. You've got to take the initiative. And it's either you uh, praising the Lord and silencing the enemy, or the enemy is way up here with all of his uh, voices, and he's just wearing you down. Mm -hmm. Which are you going to do? Which way are you going to have it? I've just seen something in the spirit, <clears throat> and that is some of you, the enemy has had uh, in a vice grip, squeezing you and trying to, uh, to hinder your walk with the Lord. And so right now, I speak freedom to you. I speak that you are free of any type of bondage that the enemy has tried to put you under. And in the name of Jesus, we're using the name of Jesus, that powerful name that has loosed you and set you free from any type of bondage Amen. in Jesus name. And see these accusers, the day and night, they're operating day and night and they can be even coming through your dreams. Yes. And, and so what is going to stop them coming from through your dreams and bringing all kinds of accusations, causing you fear and doubt and dread. You've got to be praising the Lord. You have to have, you have to be up and above them because Praise, see, is going to take you above yes, your enemies. Yes, yes. It is an offensive weapon. Okay. And so when we're praising the Lord, uh, <clears throat> our enemy doesn't even want to be around us. Amen. He doesn't want to come and, and bring sickness on you when you're praising the Lord. Hallelujah. He doesn't want to bring depression on you when you're praising the Lord. You know, and there's a scripture and it says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so if there's been any heaviness in your life lately, then put on the garment of praise. And then Brother Fred was just saying that praise is going to take us above, above the heavens, above where the enemy is fighting. And so, okay. Lord, let us praise you. What else, Sherry? What else? Ephesians 3.20. Okay. 
Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, and this is one of my favorite scriptures, above, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works or is energized in us. Okay. What this says, ask and pray. What are we asking and praying? This is about uh, prayer. This is in context because this is what are we asking for? This is prayer. Okay, so in context, how are we going to have our prayers effective? It's effective by the power, power. that works within you. And what is the power? It's the power the, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So if you have no power of the Holy Spirit, your prayers are going to be ineffective. But if you have power of the Holy Spirit, because that's where the power is. So your prayers will be effective if you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you get the power of the Holy Spirit? You know, uh, Jesus said in Acts uh, 1, 8, uh, just carry until you get, uh, be endued with power from on high and be filled with mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. That's what Ephesians 5 says. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll be in power uh, and dude with power and so until you do that your prayers are going to be ineffective lots and lots of people tell us they do not need the holy spirit well they are <laughs> when they say that they are defeated their prayers are ineffective because your prayers are effective by the power of that the works holy within spirit. you and then uh, in uh, first uh, corinthians 4 20 says that the kingdom of god is not in, in word, word but, but in power. power so it, it there can be two people saying the same thing but the one that will be effective is the one who has the power within they can be praying the same words but if mm -hmm. they don't if one of them had does not have the power within their prayers are ineffective what they say is a uh, uh, vain and empty. It's only by the power. That's where, that's what's going to activate your prayers. You need more of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I just encourage all of you to be filled with the Spirit, pray in tongues. Uh, don't let people talk you out of it. <laughs> there are a lot of people who don't believe in the Holy Spirit, but let me tell you, their prayers mm -hmm. are ineffective. Their words are ineffective. They're empty and void. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. it's the power. Hallelujah. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the secret to effective prayer. It's how much power of the Holy Spirit is working inside of you. You know, I, I think about people who use so many natural things to prevent things from coming on on them. They take vitamins for their eyes. They take vitamins for this, vitamins for that. And it's a preventative measure to keep evil away from them. But what the Lord is sharing with us tonight are spiritual weapons that we can use that will keep us in that safe place, hidden place in Christ Jesus, so that the enemy cannot harm us Amen. and cannot come upon us uh, and sneak on us, uh, sneak up on us. Uh, and I don't know about you, but this this word is is powerful. And and it's touching it's touching me tonight uh, that I need to do more praying in tongues. I need to do more praise. I need to do more of these um, uh, using these weapons of offense uh, to be victorious. Hallelujah! Jesus Amen. Christ has made you victorious. The work on the cross is finished. Hallelujah. Your sins are forgiven. The requirements, mm -hmm. the righteous requirements of the law have been done away with. You have righteousness by grace. Glory to God. And the enemy, your enemies, all of your enemies mm -hmm. 
have been disarmed. Hallelujah. They have no weapons. Hallelujah. Unless you Hallelujah. give them yours. Don't oh, do and, that, and that's the truth. Don't do it. I thank you for oh, being here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry.